Behind Singapore's culinary offerings, there are more than 48,000 people working to keep the $4 billion food manufacturing business ticking. From staples like bread and noodles to treats like chocolates and ice cream, a wide variety of foods are produced in Singapore. But without raw ingredients from around the world to make these food items, even the humble bread would be impossible. We source raw ingredients from local sources and from overseas sources too. Wheat comes from USA, Canada and Australia. Flour comes from local millers and millers from Malaysia. Skim milk comes from Australia. Raisins comes from California, USA. Functional ingredients such as lactobacilli comes from Japan. During COVID, what we found was there was definitely a supply shortage, or at least in the delivery of some of the ingredients. But we do keep enough stocks. Some of our stocks can run for six months, those that are not so perishable, some from two to three months. Gardenia makes 200,000 breads and buns daily. Like other local food manufacturers, they were hit hard by the border shutdown with Singapore's neighbour. Over 300,000 Malaysians cross the causeway daily to work in Singapore. Most of our production staff and operation staff, they actually ride their motorbikes to come to Singapore to work in our factories. We had this great challenge of finding manpower. And of course, we couldn't do it overnight. So immediately what we did was we closed our small production unit, moved the workers to the main line, which produces white and wholemeal bread. We managed to work with the union to get workers from other industries who had suffered during the COVID. One strategy to future-proof against such disruptions is to increase automation. Singapore's food manufacturing industry has been emphasizing the need to implement automation, mechanization and robotics. This is part of the country's bid to be a leader in the global food tech market, which is estimated to be worth some $335 billion by 2022. Food technology, even globally, is an emerging area. There's limited expertise, limited talents, and we have to build these capabilities over time, and also the commercialization skills. This is an area, however, that Singapore sees as important and strategic, and we are prepared to invest the resources and also take a patient view towards developing it. And we expect to drive nearly 100 million investments in the coming years into disruptive agri-food tech companies. Cell-based milk. 3D food printing, jackfruit meat, cricket protein, lab meat, and so much more. Singapore's food innovation startups are pushing boundaries. By 2050, the world will need to be producing 70% more food with significantly less natural resources. In a region which prides itself on its rich food landscape, can we get used to a whole new way of eating 